Hi everyone, Janie here. Thanks for stopping by today. I truly appreciate you all so much. Today I have a project that I really hope you like, and if you do, it would mean so much to me if you would give this a thumbs up and share it. And also, I hope you consider subscribing if you haven't already, and if you do, I hope you click on that little bell next to the subscribe button so you don't miss out on any future videos. Thank you all so much, and now let's get started. Hi everyone, I'd like you to meet Diesel, our new little bull mastiff puppy, who won't be little for long. And today he is going to be helping me make a birthday card for the breeder that we got him from. So we're going to be making a twist and pop card, and let's head on over and get started. If you're not familiar with what a twist and pop card or a twist and pop up card is, it is a card that has a mechanism inside so when you open it, it twists and pops up just like that. And that's what I'm going to be showing you how to make today. For the card I'm going to be making today, I'm going to be using a couple of products from In Love Arts and one of those is this paper pack which is called Right Now, and I have no idea why they named it that because this is an absolutely beautiful floral pack. And I thought I would just kind of flip through it for you so you can see some of the things that it comes with. It is just absolutely beautiful. And I'm gonna be using this one and that one in today's card. But just look at absolutely beautiful stuff in here. I love, love, love this pack. And I'm also going to be using this die set. And this is the um, the inside working mechanism, I guess you would call it, for the um, twist and pop-up card. And I'm not quite sure, but, um, well I am sure, that they call this the 3D foldable album frame dies. and. The reason they call it that, it's not just good for cards, but this really works great in mini albums as well. And hopefully later this year, I'll be making a mini album using the same mechanism in it. Okay, so let's get started. For the base of this card, I took a piece of cardstock that's eight and a half by 11, and I cut it down the middle at four and a fourth. And then I took that and I folded it in half and created a top fold card. Now the mechanism that I'm going to show you today will work whether your card opens this direction or off to the side. And it's also going to work if you fold your card this way. So it doesn't matter which way you do your card, this mechanism will work. So before we go any further, we're going to cut out the twist and pop mechanism. and. I'm just cutting out a sample one for you right now because I already have the one that I'm going to use cut out, but I wanted you to see how this works. So the first thing I've cut out is this piece, which I'll show you more about in a minute, but before I do that, I want to cut out these pieces and I need to cut out two of these. So just using scraps, as you can see. I actually like using my scraps, as I'm sure you already know by now. So I'm just going to run that through there. And I'm using, you know, A2 size cards, so, you know, four and a fourth by five and a half. But this will even work in other size cards, um, smaller cards. You can even do it in bigger cards if you would like. Let me get this on there. But I think this mechanism is pretty much universal and the reason why I like doing this with a die and I know a lot of people have the directions on doing this but I'm kind of lazy I guess you would say and I like this because I don't have to measure and score it is already done for me by the dies and you know a lot of you probably just like following directions and doing all the scoring and measuring yourself. So this is pretty much for those of you that are like me and really like having a die to do all the work for you. Okay, we're going to start with these two pieces and I'm going to bring it up close so you can see it's scored there so you can fold it and it has a little tab here on the side. Now, 
What we're going to do is we are going to glue this together like so. And both tabs are going to be in the back. Okay. So what we're going to do, and you can use double sided tape or whatever, but I'm a glue girl. And so I'm going to just be putting a little glue right there on that tab and a little glue right here on this tab. And as you can see, I put it on the front of both of those. Okay. And I'm just going to slide them together so that the tabs are in the back. And it looks like this. And there you can see the little tabs are on the back. All right, now I'm going to set this aside to dry. And we are going to talk about this piece. So. You can see score lines on here. There's one down the middle. You can see those in the middle there that make an X. And they actually have a couple of other score lines here that are not necessary. So that's what this looks like. And it has to be folded. So I'm going to show you one that's already folded. Okay? So here we go. We folded the center one and then we folded those. Now those are folded like this. You just fold it on those lines and it creates an X. And the other one folds right down the middle. Now it's difficult for me to actually do this <laughs> um, with the white and on the camera because usually I stick my nose on things. But I'm going to try to do this for you on camera. So we're going to just fold right on the score lines. Just like so. There's the other ones that go all the way across. We're going to fold it just like so. And now with that done, this folds so easily. Just like that. Seriously, you just grab it, fold, and it makes like this little house. And then you use, well I like to use a bone folder. You can use whatever you want, but just make sure that you really get those creases in there good. Okay, so that's what it looks like. But I am using this pink one for the pink card. And I could have used white because I'm actually going to be using white to go across it. But I don't know, sounded good to me. All right, so let's get going. Okay, so this is where Diesel comes in with some help from my wonderful husband because we are going to be using his cute little paw and I'm going to be inking it up with this Raven Black ink from Fairy Hugs and putting it on this card. So, let's see if I get enough ink on here. Oh, nibble, nibble, nibble. I'm getting my hand nibbled at. Okay, so wish me luck and down. There we go. Isn't he cute? I'm just getting nibbled at one, making sure that his paw print stayed there. Okay, let's get his head up here and his paw up. There we go. We got his paw print. Now, one of the reasons that I used this Fairy Hugs ink is because it stays nice and wet and gets good coverage. And I had decided that I wanted to do some heat embossing on this. So I'm bringing in my black embossing powder. And we are going to put that on here. And see how it turns out. So let's shake that off. Get off all the excess there. Okay, we've got that covered up, and I'm going to go use my heat gun on that off camera, and I will be right back. Okay, I got that heat embossed, and I think that came out pretty good, thanks to Diesel and my husband, and now it's time to finish putting things together. Okay, now that I've got all of my panels cut down to size, and Diesel helped us get this front panel ready, I am going to start rounding all of the corners because I just love the softness of rounded corners and I rarely do this so I just thought that this was the time to do it and I'm doing this on all the panels including the inside ones and including the card base itself so once I get all of this done 
we will start gluing the panels on and putting that mechanism in. Okay, I got all the corners rounded and I got the inside panels glued in. But before I put this outside panel on, I want to add some ribbon down the side. So I have to do that first. So I'm just going to grab my double-sided tape here. Whoops. And I'm going to put it right along this edge, like so. And just wrap that tape right around the back. Make sure it's on there good. And peel that off and put on the ribbon. And the reason why I like to put it around the back is so that I can wrap the ribbon around the back as well. I really I like that better than just the raw edge. Okay, you see here? So I'm just gonna wrap that around the back and cut that off. By the way, I want to show you this. <laughs> you can't see it good. It holds my scissors. This is actually a glue holder that I got from Make It By Marco on um, on Etsy. And it's a glue holder and I just discovered it is so perfect for my scissors. So awesome. And anyways, get back to this. I'm going to cut that off right there and wrap that around. And there we go. Now I am ready to glue this to the front and talking about glue holders check this out if you have not seen my um, recent kind of a haul review video on um, make it by Marco this is a um, what do they call it like a lounger a beach lounger that was it it's a beach lounger glue, glue holder and that way I don't have to worry about going like this trying to wait for my glue to get down to the bottom because it's already there isn't that just awesome so you know what I'll put links to both of these things down in the description box in case you missed my video on them so really awesome but now it is time to glue this on and then we can get to the rest of the card because I know you are just waiting to see how that mechanism works. But I just knew that I had to get the front on before we did that, just because it would be easier to do. Okay, looks like that's enough glue on there. I love all these new tools that I have in my craft room to make things easier for me. So, let's see here this put on like so okay let's move on to the inside okay so do you remember this piece that we glued together so we're gonna start with that and we're going to fold it right there in the middle making a mountain fold and then we're gonna do a valley fold on the outside ones creating this little accordion Okay, and before I attach it to anything, you can put words, stamps, and pictures, you know, put verses, whatever you want, but in this particular case, I'm going to be adding photos. Okay, that's all ready to go, and I'm going to set that aside, and it's time to put this in here. So, what you're going to do or what I'm going to do, or you, <laughs> is we are going to find the center of the card. And I happen to have a ruler that has a zero right there, <laughs> and so I can measure either direction on this. But basically, since this is two and a fourth, or excuse me, four and a fourth inches across, you would want to find the spot that would be at one and one, two and one eighth. Boy, I cannot do my math. You know what though? You'll figure out where the center of your card is right there. Okay, now, this is one of those moments where I'm going to be using glue, and I have a funny feeling that you are going to be using double-sided tape. So, I am just putting it right here on this little triangle part, and I'm going to line it up with that dot. I don't want it to go all the way to the seam, but it needs to go right to it. <laughs> I know that made no sense whatsoever, but 
there we go. I'm going to just fold this over like so. Okay. And then I'm going to turn it over. And I'm going to do the same thing on this side. Just get some glue on there. You don't want too much because you don't want it to get on the rest of the mechanism or like I just did and get it on the card. Okay. Making sure everything is still lined up and bring it down. Now, because I used my beacon here, it's going to have to dry a minute as opposed to if I had used double-sided tape. But I really feel for something that's going to be tugged on a lot that a good wet glue like Beacon 3-in-1 or Beacon Fabri-Tac is the best route to go. So I am going to be back in a minute Actually, you know what? While that is drying, <laughs> I think it's time to finish the front of the card. What do you think? Okay, so I've got the front decorated. I put a ribbon up the side with a bow and a little tag that says make a wish. And I added happy birthday down here with a little rhinestone right there. And that paper is just so beautiful. I think it's just so perfect for this. Okay, so let's get back to finishing the inside. Okay. So now it's time to add our pictures. And what we're going to do, and again, you can use glue or, whoops, my lid is coming off. You can use glue or um, double-sided tape to do this. And what you're going to do is you're going to put it on the top right, okay? So the top right side and about one inch from, you know, go from the edge all the way over to about one inch just like that and the bottom left okay so bottom left you're going to do the same thing you can put it in this last one inch section right there like that and now we're going to bring this over and we're going to line it up right with that oops and we're going to line this one up right with that Okay, and it's probably best to do one side at a time instead of what I just did. And of course, it's also best, I mean, I like using my beacon, but it would stick like immediately if you were using your double-sided tape. I think one of the things that I like about using the glue, though, is that I can make sure I have it positioned right. So, got that on there, and I'm going to let that dry for a second. Okay, are you ready to see this in action? We open it up, and you can watch it twist and pop up. Isn't that just cute? I love it. And I added this down here, and that up there to finish things off on the inside. But I think that she's going to love this. Now, I want to let you know that when making one of these cards, you're going to have to work at opening and closing it for a while before you give it to someone because it's a little stiff at first and so it has to get used to opening and closing. So you'll just do that. You'll just, you know, close it and open it and close it and open it until it loosens up and it'll be perfect for the recipient. If you like this Twist and Pop Fun Fold card and are interested in the die set or papers that I use to make it, I will have the links below in the description box as well as a discount code that you can use at In Love Arts. And I will also have the links for the products that I got from Make It by Marco. Happy crafting everyone! Bye bye If you like this video, I hope you give it a thumbs up. And if you're not already subscribed, I hope you consider that too. And if you do, be sure to click the little bell next to the subscribe button so that you don't miss out on any upcoming videos videos or giveaways. And I hope you stop by Crafters Castle on Facebook and also Crafters Castle Challenge Blog to enter your creations.